question to, to Becker and the denial of death. Becker was a cultural anthropologist who took very seriously the idea that, that his field as a social science should be able to provide a comprehensive theory of human behavior and human culture. And that means providing broad and verifiable explanations of human behavior and social phenomena. Why are people as they are? Why is society as it is? Becker's cultural anthropology that he presents in a series of books focused relentlessly on this fact. We humans are mortal, and we humans know that we're mortal. We are finite, mortal creatures, mortal creatures with highly developed intelligences who are conscious of being intelligent, finite, mortal creatures. A consequence of this awareness is that we not only use intelligence to ensure our physical survival and to develop social and cultural institutions that promote our various interests and so forth, but also that it means that we try to live in ways that satisfy our awareness of being what we are. And that's a very general statement. There's lots of ways that we try to satisfy our awareness of being what we are, mortal, finite, sexed, conscious, intelligent creatures. Now, to put this in a certain way, this, is not, this, this next phrase is not really Becker's language, but I think it's helpful for getting at what Becker's after. Human beings are, are creatures who are concerned with meaning. We're concerned with the meanings of things, and we're all concerned with the meanings of our own lives, fundamentally. And human culture is the, the expression and, uh, uh, and outcome of our concern with meaning. Culture, uh, as Becker would use it, I believe, the word culture very basically refers to the set of beliefs and values that shape a society's way of life. That indicates what, what is meaningful and dignified in human living, and that serves to define both what reality is and what the human situation in reality is. An element of culture deals with the whole business of the cosmos, the whole mystery of the cosmos, and how we fit into the whole business of the cosmos. These are basic functions of culture. It tells us what we are. It indicates for us what the right way of doing things is. Now, Becker became convinced that in order to understand how any culture performs these functions, we need to attend to a very basic psychological fact about existence which is that our awareness of our own physical vulnerability and our mortality gives rise to a fundamental anxiety about our human situation. We have uh, what might be called a, a precarious foothold in existence, and we know it. Uh, earlier today, when I was uh, uh, flying up from Texas, I, uh, I found myself in Dallas. You know about the rains that are going on in, in, in Texas. And I was in Dallas, and uh, as I got onto that second flight, ready to go to Seattle, oh boy, I'm going to make it in time. The thunderstorms came in over Dallas and stopped us. And um, so we sat on the ground for a long time, and occasionally the captain would say, well, uh, it looks like the uh, thunderstorms are clearing out. And then he'd say, no, no, we've got to wait here for a while. They've closed the airport down again because there's thunderstorms immediately overhead and we can't fly out through them. And I was sitting there, and I was of divided feelings here. I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. I've got to get to Seattle. And on the other hand, I kept thinking, what would it be like to be hit by lightning <laughs> in an airplane flight? I was, and then I was working a precarious foothold in existence. You know, I, thought, I, thought, I was getting a deeper sensitivity to what I was feeling it. Uh, ultimately, ultimately, of course, we know we're going to die. Uh, our, pre our precarious foothold is going to, mm, physically, we're going to slip. So the anxiety that arises from that, it's not, uh, as Becker would say, it's not an option. Anxiety is not an option. It springs from our very nature. Um, it comes along with our awareness of all the ways in which meaning in our lives can crumble. Uh, can crumble through illness and through failure and most completely through death. So, anxiety arises when we face our finitude and our mortality. 
So, Becker explains, we devise all kinds of strategies, all kinds of strategies for evading and suppressing both the anxiety that arises from that awareness and the awareness of those aspects of our situation that make us anxious, especially our awareness of our mortality. According to Becker, this evasion of the awareness of mortality is one of the basic functions of culture. This is a Beckerian thesis that a lot of his work is built upon. Uh, it's a fundamental function of culture. Um, I was listening to the tape uh, uh, of Sheldon Solomon from last April that he gave here in this room uh, uh, earlier, and, and he did such a nice job of summarizing three basic functions of culture that I just, I just swiped them, and I'm going to repeat them now. Culture gives us a sense that we are part of a meaningful universe, one of the fundamental functions of culture. Secondly, culture gives us each individually a sense that our lives are significant and valuable. Culture helps us explain how this, 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 this temporary, mm, weak, mm, individual existence that each of us has, which is so infinitesimally nothing, it seems, in the whole business of the cosmos, nevertheless has some dignity, has some heroism to it. Culture does that for us in many ways. And then finally, thirdly, another central function of culture is that it helps us to avoid awareness of our mortality. It helps us to deny mortality in a variety of ways, lots of ways. And this brings us to the book with the catchy title, The Denial of Death. You remember, I, I remember seeing, a, do you remember Annie Hall, Woody Allen's movie? There's a moment in there when, 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 when Woody Allen and uh, Diane Keaton are, are splitting up and they're separating the stuff in their apartment and they're splitting up the books and Diane, Diane Keaton picks up the denial of death, which is, you, know, right, but you can see it very clearly. It's the, she says, this must be yours. All the books with death in the title are yours. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it helped uh, promote sales of the book, I think. <laughs> in, in the denial of death, Becker develops the thesis uh, at some length that the desire to ignore, to evade, to forget about, reinterpret, or otherwise deny mortality is one of the most basic drives, maybe the most basic drive, in individual behavior and cultural beliefs. He's really pushing that thesis as far as he can take it. And he's pretty provocative about the extent to which we succumb to the temptation to build up lies about ourselves and reality that shield us from the truth about how precarious our foothold in reality really is. Chapter four in the book is called Human Character as a Vital Lie. And its thesis is that typical character development, average character development, involves a, a person's building up an interpretation about himself and about reality that conforms to the facts of existence enough to keep us out of the madhouse, but is illusory enough to protect us from the facts of existence that are terrifying, including our mortality facts that would, in Becker's view, paralyze us with anxiety if we attended to them steadily or with steady honesty. Uh, reminiscent of T.S. Eliot's line in The Four Quartets, humankind cannot bear very much reality. 